Hi folks, hope all is going well. Hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. And that, you know, leaving the weekend behind hasn't been too much of a drag on you. There are lots and lots of, shall I say, massive videos coming this week. Today, obviously, is Monday, so we're doing Hobby Nightmares, but tomorrow we will be discussing the pricing of the, the Leviathan box set. And on Wednesday, we'll be doing a very, very, very important 40k rant on why cultivating hobby chads is very important. Before then, though, Hobby Nightmares, it is on a Monday. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. The Patreon button is also down below. If you want to buy me a pint or, or help out around here, that's also a way to do it. And of course, the Discord is down below. Make sure, by the way, if you can get any models on the run-up to, run to 10th edition, that you go and give uh, Composite Games some love. They are in the description down below. If you if you use the promo code Northern Exile down below, you will get yourself 5% off your order at checkout. So, moving onwards, let's do some Hobby Nightmares. Because these have been piling up for a while, and I haven't really gone into the deeper mailbag in quite a while. So these have been picked at random. And hopefully, they're quite entertaining. Let's get on with it. Uh, Bagham says, Hi North, this happened a few days ago, okay? I mainly play World War II games like Bolt Action, but our local game club mostly plays Warhammer 40,000. Over time, it has gotten hard to find players for Bolt Action, unfortunately, so I decided to give 40k a go, seeing as this is a new edition and it's on its way and all that good stuff. Anyway, I picked up a Chaos Combat Patrol because I thought Chaos Space Marines had the best looking models. After having painted most of it, I asked the, in, in the local WhatsApp group of our club if someone, if someone wants to play a game and introduce me to the rules, because I've never played 40k before. Easy enough, someone offered to come and play. I showed up at the club, and here is this kid, maybe 18 years old at most. Now. I'm in my 30s, married with a small child, which kind of makes me uncomfortable playing with kids. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. No. But I figure I'm only here to learn the basics, so okay. All right. Yeah, I, I, I get what you mean, man. Look, and there are certain things about the hobby, right? Where if I play a hobby like 40k, essentially, other people from the outside might see it as, you know, a game for kids, right? We know it's not, but they don't know that, especially somebody walking past the store. Now, if two, if they see two grown-ass men who look good, you know, are dressed nicely, and are playing a game like that, they'll be like, oh, it's their hobby, that's fine, you know? If they see a guy playing with a child, different connotation entirely. Anyway, the kid pulls out his miniatures out of one of those plastic drawer sets people use for storing nails, rivets and other tools, which makes me cringe when thinking of the damage this would likely do to a paint job of the miniatures. But when he pulls out his miniatures, I figure he doesn't care much for how they look. He probably caught my look when he quickly mentioned how these are tournament legal, they have three colours, or something to that, to that extreme, okay. Now, my biggest enjoyment in the hobby, regardless of what game I play, is to paint miniatures to look great. Rules come a distant second. I also love doing kit bashing and stuff. I am, I am attaching a picture to let you know, let you see what I mean. Yeah, some of it's looked done really well, man. Um, I think the hair looks a bit odd, you know, because uh, you, you use um, some sort of tuft for your for your smoke and stuff. Yeah, looks pretty good though. For me, it is unthinkable to waste so much money on miniatures just to play with them on a table. At this point, why bother with Games Workshop miniatures? Just use proxies and whatever. But that's just me. Okay. Uh, what, I, what I'm getting from this man is that you're not the kind of person who should be looking for games on a WhatsApp group, right? Okay. Hmm. And that sounds strange. But you've just really explained really well to me there what kind of a hobbyist you are. You should be doing that when you're asking for games online. What you've just said to me there is what you, that, that, that one paragraph, right? It starts with, now my biggest enjoyment in the hobby is, and you say, regardless of what game you play, you like to paint your miniatures, and gaming and rules come a distant second. Now, anybody looking at that message 
will know. Okay, I shouldn't bring a powerful list against this guy. He just wants to learn what the game is all about, and he's not that into rules anyway. So let's have a nice fluffy game with some nicely painted miniatures. Somebody else, a kindred spirit, will be out there ready to step in and give you the game that you want. What you did that was a mistake is that you went into a WhatsApp group and you just said, hey, can someone play a game with me? Now, I've always said, look, the world just doesn't conform to the, to the way you are, you know, that's just not how things work. But also, but also, sometimes you need to give yourself a chance. You really do need to give yourself a chance. And I don't think you have done here. Anyway. Anyways, he carries on. I am looking forward to this introductory game. We start playing and I get the feeling this kid just cares about the rules and winning. Surprise, surprise. And with the most optimized list ever. He brags about how my faction rules are irrelevant against his army and how statistically his units are going to have the upper hand, etc. He also dared me multiple times to overcharge my plasma weapons when he saw I was shooting with a plasma equipped unit, which was really irritating. I wrapped up the game soon after seeing as this, uh, 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 seeing as I had to get back home to take care of my child, and this wasn't much fun anyway. As I'm writing this, I hope future experiences with this game will be better. Competitive play really isn't my thing. I just like putting nicely painted models on the table and rolling some goddamn dice. Okay, so here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. Again, we've we've covered where the where you're falling down. We've covered that. But also, like, again, give yourself a chance, please. You know, this is not a hobby where there's nothing worse than being in a game of Warham 40k and getting fatigued and not wanting to do it anymore. That is the worst feeling you can have in this hobby, right? Aside from somebody telling you models are rubbish when you when you when you spent so much time on them, right? But aside from that, my god, dude, no, no, j just just give yourself a chance. Make sure that you're playing the people. You know, play that, play the opponent, not the hobby, right? Ninety percent of this hobby is if you're going to be gaming is finding a decent opponent who you gel with. That's the whole thing. Do that from now on. I'm telling you now. You, you, will, you will appreciate it and you'll love the hobby a whole lot more. I'm telling you. Alright? Okay. Uh, Squeaky Pickle says, Hi North, I hope you are well. I am, thank you. I am a relatively new member to the, to the Discord and a frequent gremlin in the voice chat. Shout out to Charlie, Crom, Baldrick, Steer and Lucas for making Friday movie nights such an absolute hysterical cesspool. No worries. I was actually out having a pint with Charlie over the weekend, and he was he was telling me about all the, all the stuff you guys have been getting up to, which is awesome. I really, really, if any of you are watching, you know, I really wished I could be more engaged in the Discord. But with things going on at the moment, I'm just like I barely have time to record videos. So I, this is where I am right now. Um, hopefully, as the summer goes on, I'm going to have a bit more time. I bet a lot of you. Um, this has happened twice now. Where over the summer, I. I I really go for it in terms of my engagement because I have a lot more spare time, and then and then as soon as the school year starts again, I'm back to square one, you know. So, but I'm going to try this summer uh, to, to be more engaged and to keep it going as well because you know you, you guys deserve it. You're all you're all really really cool. Having watched your hobby nightmares for a number of years, I thought it about time to include one of my own. This is not going to be one of those that makes your blood boil, but rather emit a hearty chuckle followed by several face palms. Okay. Our journey begins in the long forgotten mists of 5th edition, or 5th edition, sorry. A simpler time, a better time. A bit of backstory. I have been collecting Blood Angels since 1996. It was my first and only love, and what I have dabbled with all other factions, Nids, Tau, Thousand Tons, and uh, Necrons, Blood Angels is still my heart and soul. After I started my first full time job and had my own money, I swore I would buy something truly spectacular with the cash I had worked so very, very hard for. Then the heavens opened, and something was announced that I immediately knew I had to have. The Space Marine Battle Company box. I have attached an image of said box along with the contents to save me typing it out. Yeah. <clears throat> this box, if I remember correctly, was £300. I bought two. Oh my god. You made somebody's day. Whatever King's Workshop you went into, you made somebody's day. As expected, however, 
When I purchased them, I was told my store didn't have them in stock. They would, however, be happy to ship them to my home address within a week. I agreed and went on my way home, happy as fucking Larry. Several days passed and I came home to find an entire pallet in my kitchen. What they had done ra was, rather than wait for the boxes to become available, they instead decided to recreate the contents of the boxes with singles from the stockroom. What commenced was basically three hours of reverse Tetris. <laughs> my god. Not only that, but I'm guessing that whomever had packed this pallet had lost count as I had six extra Devastator squads and four extra Rhinos. Whilst not a nightmare, it was certainly a shock. Much love, Squeaky Pickle. I love that. I love the fact that you're just sitting there in your kitchen going, there's another Devastator squad. And another Devastator squad. And, and another Devastator squad. <laughs> it's like, you know what they've done? They've literally sent somebody with that job to go and do that in the stockroom. They've been called away, and then they've come back and gone, uh, what is in the box again? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they started again. So they've, they've literally started again several times and, and put another dev Devastator squad in there or another Rhino in there by accident. But hey, happy accidents, man. They should have called you, though, first and said, listen, um, I know you bought two of these boxes. They won't be in stock for a while, though. So would you mind if we just gave you the box in, like, separate boxes? You know what I mean? Of, of, you know, of using all the rest of the stock that we've got, right? Exactly the same models, just in different boxes, right? And you'd have been okay with that, but at least you wouldn't have been ha had that much of a shock going into it. Anyway, uh, Quaid says, no, sorry, Credux says, Credux, two anecdotes, okay. Credux says, hey, Northern, I love your Australian accent. Anyway, I wrote to you before about Mr. Smedley. <laughs> Still gets me. Still gets me every time. Anyway, I wrote to you before about Mr. Smedley. <laughs> And the Boy Scouts that did a, that did a Christian D and D campaign whilst at summer camp. You can call me Credux. I got two anecdotes, one being a hobby non nightmare, and the other being a story that will cause you to dry heave. The first anecdote is a quick blurb. I was in Mon in Montreal back in 2020 March 2023, and the Games Workshop store there has an amazing manager. Any time I travel, I find either a Games Workshop store or a local game store to visit. At the very least, I will buy a pot of paint or something similar if nothing catches my eye. When I popped into the Montreal Games Workshop store, it was about midday during the week. There was the manager and the random store grunt on duty. Neither one dry humped my leg to get me to buy anything. In fact, the manager, a fellow gaming dad, seemed interested in just chatting with a fellow nerd. We talked about the recent 10th edition announcement, my favourite models, plastic ones, you pervert, and, <laughs> uh, and my general dorky stuff. At no time did I feel pressured to buy anything. Further, when I brought up a non-games workshop, lol, heresy, the manager admitted, off the record, that he also enjoys that game. Okay, that's cool. All in all, I encourage anyone that is planning on going to Montreal to check out the store. The second anecdote is a bit longer. Even though I had touched a boob before, I played Magic the Gathering a lot when I was in my early 20s. That's a good way of putting it, even though I had touched a boob before. Brilliant. I would go to my local game store's Friday Night Magic, which is a miniature tournament of sorts. Like all Magic Gatherings, players bring uh, binders full of sadness, oops, I mean rare cards, to trade. One night, a fresh, a fresh blood showed up. He was uh, a usual mag magic player in appearance, odour, and neurodivergence. More importantly, he had a full binder of new to us cards for the gang to look over and barter for. He was wearing one of those t-shirts with the howling wolf on it. For the sake of the story, I will call him Lehman Russ. Throughout the course of the night, I did not interact with Lehman. I did notice that the usual sharks were swarming him looking to trade. Close to the end of the night, the store was closed, but around four of us were still going on. One of the usual players began freaking out over something. I was on the other side of the room, so I could not make out what was happening. 
the judge slash tournament organizer went over and spoke with the player. All of a sudden, the, the judge slash tournament organizer stood straight up and yelled, Door. Wow, okay. Without, without hesitation, one of the biggest players jumps up and runs over to the front door of the store and locks it. Whoa. And another usual player heads to the bathroom and blocks the door. The judge slash tournament organizer then announces cards have been stolen from another player and all people will be searched. Anyone not agreeing to be searched can wait for the cops to arrive. Wow. That is a that is a very good that is a very 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 quick a very quick response there. <clears throat> right. Now, even though you, Northern Exile, are from New Zealand... What? No, I'm not. Uh, you are a smart guy, and you can probably guess what happened next. One by one, the usuals were searched by the judge tournament organiser. Among all of them, none of the missing cars were found. In the interim, Beeman Russ's face decided to, shirt to circle through various shades of white. When it was his turn to be searched, he gave some bluster about his rights and it looked like he was going to have to wait for the cops to come. However, I guess he noticed that all of the regulars had circled around him. Two of the bigger players grabbed him by the arms, and then the judge slash tournament organiser began to rifle through his pockets over Lehman Russ's protests. Finding nothing, he tells Lehman that he is going to lift his shirt and check, it and check his waistbands for the cards. Lehman lets out a, a loud whine, a whinge I guess for you, you dumb Scotsman. I'm not a Scotsman either. What is wrong with this guy? And plead for him not to do so. Of course, the crowd shouts with glee that it is clear he has the cards under his shirt. The judge slash tournament organiser grabs Lehman's shirt and yanks it up as hard as he can. Sadly, there were no stolen magic cards under his shirt or in his waistband. But what Lehman did have under his shirt was a colostomy bag. Oh no. oh no! No 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 Nope Nope No But what Lehman did have under his shirt was a colostomy bag a full colostomy bag in case no one knows, a colostomy bag is an, is an actual plastic bag that is on the outside of a person's body and is, collect, and is connected to the person's digestive tract in order to collect waste. This is done because the person cannot defecate through their um, turd cutter. When the judge slash tournament organiser ripped Lehman's shirt up, up, he must have accidentally grabbed the colostomy bag as well. And as a result, everybody that was in front of Lehman was sprayed with the contents of the now empty colostomy bag. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Needless to say, no one cared about the missing pieces of overpriced cardboard at that point. I struggle to remember what happened afterward. I was too busy retching. I do recall that we never saw Lehman again after that. <laughs> it just slapstick. I imagine him doing that and like it goes everywhere. <laughs> like you, you just see this guy in the corner it's dry heaving. <laughs> I went back to the game store the next day because I was in between touching boobs at that period in my life. So I had a lot of free time. Naturally, the store had a late opening that day due to the prior night splash damage. I did manage to get a lot of discounted model kits that day as a result of the Poon Army. Strangely enough, it is hard to, tell some t to sell something for full MRSP when they've been sprayed with the contents of a colostomy bag. Anyway, I hope your stomach is not too upset. I know how delicate you Irish flowers can be. Keep up the good work. Alright, now I know you're just trying to troll me. Now I know you're trying to... That's one too many. That's one too many. Um, but my god, dude. I'm going to let you off because that was just epic. That was really, really funny. <laughs> That's like... That is absolutely vile. 
that is fine. But it, it's just such a Father Ted, like, you know, sitcom moment. Where everyone's shouting, going, get, get his shirt off, get his shirt off, the thieving bastard, get his shirt off. <laughs> you just rip the shirt off. And shit just goes everywhere. I just, oh my god. Anyway, anyway, I love you all a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow, uh, where we're gonna we're gonna be doing a full review and look at the Leviathan box set, what's in it, how much it's gonna cost you, and why and why Games Workshop are essentially essentially here for the scalpers and not you. Love you all. Speak to you later. Speak to you tomorrow. Have a good one. I'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, by the way, love you a long time. Sorry, didn't say that bit. Bye.